Grips Forum aims at informing policy debates by inviting leaders in various fields. It is a public event, at the same time, gives our students opportunities to join and benefit from the lectures and discussion. Do you know that 100 million people, more than 1% of the world population, are currently forced to flee from home countries? This is the latest information just released by the Office of UNHCR, which is United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. Certainly, the current Ukraine crisis is exacerbating the situation. Why are these problems happening? How should the international community, uh, community should respond? Today, we will think about the global refugee problem and Japanese response. I am very pleased to invite Mr. Saburo Takizawa, Emeritus Professor of Toyo Ewa University. Professor Takizawa is a leading expert on refugee and immigration policy. Currently, he is Special Advisor, Japan for UNHCR, as well as Vice Chairman of the Board of Directors, CARE International. Professor Takizawa had extensive working experience at the UN and its specialized agencies. Especially, he spent many years at UNHCR as chief financial officer and representative of Japan. More recently, he served as a chairman of the board of directors of Japan for UNHCR. He also advises the Ministry of Justice and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Sadly, the war in Ukraine continues. The lives of innocent citizens have been threatened and sacrificed. The neighboring countries in Europe and the international communities are accepting and supporting those people who face difficulties. For long, Japan has been criticized for its closing doors to refugees. But in the face of ongoing crisis, it seems that the Japanese government is trying to accept the Ukrainian evacuees more proactively than before. Will this lead to change in Japanese refugee policy? At the same time, we should not lose sight of global refugee problem. As I said before, these problems are particularly serious in such countries like Syria, Venezuela, Afghanistan, South Sudan, Myanmar, and also Ethiopia, the country which I know, which has a bit difficulties. In addition, we should recognize that there are many internally displaced people within their home countries. So to understand the nature of this complex problem and think about our response, we would like to learn from Professor Takizawa. He will speak about global refugee problems in Japan's refugee policies for about 45 minutes. Then we will have panel discussion inviting groups, faculty members, and students. And if time allows, after that, we will have open Q&A session with a wider audience. So please raise your hand uh, when the time comes. The presentation and discussion in this session will be on the record. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Professor Takizawa. Good afternoon, and thank you, Professor Ono, for introducing me for today's um, lecture. It's really a um, pleasure and uh, honor to be a speaker um, today in this forum. Um, I would be um, talking about um, mainly the Japan's refugee policy, but we, I want to put it in a context of global refugee problems. This is my self-introduction. Uh, Professor Ono has already um, presented my background. Please focus on the, the, the I think, I think this is a not up-to-date um, presentation. So let me introduce myself. I'm a runner. I'm a marathon runner. 
at the age of 74, I completed my full marathon at the last Tokyo Marathon with a time five hours, 29 minutes. And this was, this was 48th in the same age ranking. So I'm the num number 48th in the in 74 years uh, ranking, which is um, something which I can be both of. Now, today's presentation is um, limited to 45 minutes, and I have uh, 36 slides, and I calculated for each presentation, I have only one minute and 15 seconds, 75 seconds. So I have to run. I, have to, I can't walk, I have to run. So please bear with me if I skip some of the presentations. Now, um, let's start with some of the global refugee problems. What are the problems first? And then what are the main causes? And then what are the um, responses of the main, um, international community? Um, Professor um, Ono mentioned that um, the latest um, financial publication said that the number of forcibly displaced persons exceeds um, one, 100 million, which is an enormous number. When I joined the UN in 1981, the UN shell was a very small organization, only 800 people, and the total number of refugees, mainly refugees, was about 10 million. Now, the UN shell itself is a huge organization with staff members of um, 17,000. So it's enormous um, expansion in the last 40 or so years reflecting the sharp increase in the number of victims of forced displacement. Um, so let's start with the problem. What is the problem? There are basically two problems. One is the human tragedy. 100 million people have been forcibly displaced in Syria, 3.2 million. Myanmar, more than 1.2 million people, mainly Rohingya people, have been in displacement for decades. Afghanistan, for the last 40 years, large number of people have been internally displaced or became refugees. And recently, Ukraine, in three, just three months, more than six, three million people have left the country, um, many, many of them to, to Poland, although some two million people have returned home. This is a very interesting uh, um, aspect of uh, Ukrainian refugees, what um, evacuees. The second problem is a political uh, problem. Um, in the host countries that received millions sometimes millions of refugees. If the number of refugees is um, 10,000 or 20,000, I think most of the country can accept it and accommodate them and provide assistance and protection. But when it comes to 1 million, 2 million, or 3 million, like Poland in today, the impact is enormous. And some countries can't cope with the pressure. There will be social, political, and economic um, repercussions, and there may be some anti-migration um, or anti-refugee anti -refugee problems. Refugee problem has become international political problems. 40 years ago, it was not, it was not. It was just humanitarian problem. We have to help them who fled from their countries. But today, it's some um, global political problems. Um, and um, why we have such a um, 
um, problem. I give three main reasons. Um, one is two strong states. The governments of, um, say, autocratic states tend to persecute citizens and the people leave, people flee the country, um, asking for safety and security in neighboring countries. And that was precisely what happened when the 1951 Refugee Convention was um, um, created. Most of the people were more or less political refugees. But today, the situation is very different. Large number of people, millions of people flee the country because of the war, because of the internal armed conflict, massive outflow of people. Some of them become migrants. They flee the country because they can't live in a country which has totally collapsed. So these people are called sometimes survival migrants, survival migrants, migrants who leave the country just to survive. And there's, there are not much difference between survival migrants and um, refugees, you can imagine. So the reason is war, which we see today in Poland um, and in some European countries. This wasn't um, envisaged when the 1951 Refugee Convention was created. It was just after the World War II, people thought that there would be no war, or well, there shouldn't be any war. So it's not part of the reasons for um, persecution. It was not listed as a um, um, reason for the flight, but now there's um, war refugees are coming back and becoming a major issue today. So what are the international responses to these um, refugee problems? We have a um, global refugee regime consisting, consisting of three pillars. First is um, a set of refugee conventions. Second is the UNHCR. And third one is um, probably thousands of uh, NGOs who provide support, assistance, and protection to the refugees. Most of the people who are working in the refugee camps you see on the TV screen are employees of the NGOs. UNCR has some um, 17,000 employees, but NGOs would have much more than that. 20, 30, 40,000 people are working. Without the help of the NGO partners, UNCR can, can't um, work and um, refugees can't be protected. Three solutions. From the perspective of UNHCR, there are three solutions. Um, um, if we look at this uh, cartoon, the, uh, the first solution is um, for the Refugees, for the refugees um, who um, are accepted by a host country to stay there, get permanent residence, eventually get naturalization. This is the first solution. And second solution is um, going home. This is supposed to be the best solution. Everybody wants to go home. Um, as for the Ukrainians who, who have come to Japan in the last two months, um, I was told that only three people have applied for refugee status. Vast majority of the people want to go home. They want to go back to Ukraine. And this is um, the case for most of the um, refugees. They want to go back. So this is the best solution. And third one is the so-called third country resettlement. Um, some uh, refugee situations have um, been continuing for decades, and there are people who are particularly vulnerable, such as uh, 
single head of a family, female family, or um, the old people, the aged. These people could be rescued by the so-called third country resettlement program. These uh, refugees would be taken to um, the um, Western wealthy countries and find them um, um, life there. Japan has also started. Japan has been running a small scale resettlement program for the last um, 10, 12 years. So these are the three solutions, but real solutions, actual solutions are different. Um, instead of going back, many people, one third of the total refugee population live in, in a refugee camp for decades, literally for decades. Another group of people, and the majority of the refugees today live in, in urban slums. This is um, a mom, which has a um, large number of Syrian urban refugees. They live in a slum-like environment and living on, say, part-time jobs without much assistance from the UNCR or international community. Some of them, in despair, try to cross the Mediterranean and reach the European continent and um, face such a tragedy. Now, um, why these um, problems? Why these shortcomings of the international refugee protection regime came about? The first is, um, the so-called territorial asylum principle. The government say, if you come to our country, we will provide you assistance, we will protect you. But unless you reach our shores, we can't do anything. So this is abused and misused. Many countries um, say, you, you couldn't come to our country, so we can't protect you. Protect you. But indeed, um, the um, both people um, pushed back, passport um, checks are uh, strengthened, and um, um, the borders are um, physically barricaded so that um, refugees can't come into a country. And this is seen everywhere. The latest example is um, um, the UK. UK Parliament has just passed a law which enabled the government to transfer the asylum seekers who crossed the, the sea from France to UK to send to Rwanda and let them apply for asylum. Those people will never be able to reapply asylum in UK. So this is what happened recently and it's not only uk australia us many countries attempt to push back refugees and asylum seekers second limitation is some um, very narrow definition of refugee the refugee commission says um the refugees of those people who are afraid of being persecuted by the government because of the reason of race, religion, nationality, membership of a particular group or political opinion. Only these five reasons are valid. Other reasons are not um, relevant in the, in the definition of a refugee. Keyword is some persecution. But um, as we have seen in the cartoon, majority of the refugees today who flee the country are leaving the country because of the internal armed conflict or sometimes war. But these people will not be treated as a refugee because war or internal armed conflict is not listed as a reason for persecution. So some people feel that the 1950 Refugee Convention is losing relevance. 
Although um, one can say that because of the increase in the number of authoritarian government, such as China, Russia, the relevance of 1950 refugee convention based on the on the, the persecution might be uh, relevant again. Third limitation is free writing. Um, I think you are, you are studying the public, international public good. The refugee protection is also international public good, and um, government tend to free ride on the protection provided other governments. Um, country A expects and country B would provide them the protection or financial assistance. So everybody waiting for others to provide them um, protection. And this is the typical case of free writing on the provision of global public goods by other countries. In fact, um, um, the states avoid burden and responsibility sharing. As, as I mentioned, walls and built barriers are set up, borders are crossed so that people can't come into the country. This is a typical case, concrete um, case of um, burden shifting. I think this is um, um, quite useful mental framework to analyze the refugee problems. The decision makers um, um, seeing four dimensions, four factors in, ma in making decisions. The first is um, security. The first is the security of the, the country, national security. When uh, millions of people are coming into the country, the government um, um, decision makers are naturally concerned. So ensuring security is the first aspect. But at the same time, the human rights of the um, refugees or migrants have to be protected. So this is the second dimension. And there are trade-offs. People have to, government officials have to balance the two. Another dimension is the markets, which means in many advanced countries today, people need um, foreign workers, migrants. So particularly the business want to have more um, people, more migrants. But that collides with the people's concern about cultural identity, maintaining identity, maintaining homogeneity, maintaining a tradition, maintaining the language. These are also um, to be balanced. So four factors have to be um, factored in. It's not only the human rights um, protection when we look at the refugee issues, we have to also look at other three um, dimensions and factors. At least this is the thinking of uh, the government officials. Now, um, the international community is aware of the limitations and um, they have um, agreed on the so-called Global Compact on Refugees in, 19, in 2018 um, for, with, with four aims. One is um, burden sh sharing share burdens of host countries. Second is um, help self-reliance of the refugees. And third one is um, third country ref refugee resettlement. This is also part of the burden sharing. And the fourth one is a sort of peace building to facilitate the return of refugees to home countries. Japan's refugee policy. How much? How? What is? How much did I spend? Remaining. Yeah. I have to hurry up. I have to run at the pace of six minutes thirty seconds per kilometers. Otherwise, I will not meet the, the deadline. Japan's refugee policy overview. 
is um, here. Um, we have one, one pillar is a provision of asylum through the, the refugee state of determination. And second is burden sharing, either in terms of receiving refugees um, through um, alternative pathways or financial burden sharing. I'm sorry that the, this slide is not up to date, so the numbers are slightly um, um, different or better uh, than it appears. First, the asylum. This has been the um, uh, focus of um, narratives on Japan's refugee policy for the last 40 years. That means um, people, um, Japan has been criticized for receiving too few uh, refugees. Um, the latest statistics show that um, the number of um, refugees, number of people who have been recognized as refugees have been going up and last year it was 74. Another aspect is uh, the number of um, asylum seekers, which used to be, say, 700, 800, when I was the UN shelter head in Tokyo. It went up 20,000, and now it came down to some 4,000. So why these changes? Why these uh, fluctuations? The Japan passing has been going for decades. Um, this is one of the uh, typical um, annual uh, criticism um, by the foreign media. But it's not only foreign media. One day, once I met um, um, Mrs. Ogata, the form former head of uh, UNC, she said, Japan lacks humanity. Japan lacks humanity. The Japanese government don't care about the plight of the refugees. They consider this year um, fire on the other side of the river. She was very critical, and that was um, shared by many uh, people. Um, why so many, so few refugees have been um, recognized? One is geography. Japan is far away from um, the countries where um, internal um, conflict takes place. Um, definitely it's very far away, and for most of the refugees, there's no way to come to Japan. They can't get passport, they can't get a visa, there's no money. So uh, uh, geography is one. And um, second is the Japan passing. Look at these numbers. Last year, only 28 Chinese applied for refugee status. And there were, there were more than 20,000 Chinese who applied for asylum abroad. 10,000 were in the States but only 28 in Japan. Russia, which also sends us more than 10,000 people every year as asylum seekers, there was only one um, who crossed the, cha the channel uh, to Hokkaido. He applied for refugee status. And zero from Hong Kong. You remember there were uh, political turmoil in Hong Kong and now applied for refugee status in Japan, and zero from North Korea. In the last, say, 10 years, more than 300 people um, came to Japan on a, um, on a broken ship. None has applied for refugee status. So these countries, three countries surrounding Japan, um, very, few people, very few people apply for asylum. They pass Japan and go to other countries. This is a country of origin. Majority of the asylum seekers are from Southeast Asian countries. Um, very few are from uh, the top refugee processing countries, as you see on the right side. These statistics show that Japan, um, um, not many, not many, or well, very few um, refugees come to Japan. This is first reason. And second reason is um, very um, the narrow definition of the um, refugee conventions has been used by the Ministry of Justice or Immigration Service Agencies for decades. Very narrow definition. Um, majority of the um, people have been turned down 
because of the strict um, refugee status determination process, um, and most of the conflict, conflict refugees have been given only a special permit to stay. But the um, MOJ is also um, um, changing. I will um, mention the reform later, so I can skip um, this part. Um, um, one thing I want to draw attention is um, the courts are also supporting the decisions made by the um, UNHCR, um, no, by, by MOJ or ISA. The Ministry of Justice and courts are the same, uh, sharing the same opinion about refugee status. The other reason is the, the Japanese society's um, attitudes towards uh, refugees. Uh, in 2020, the cabinet of survey showed that 11% of the people consider that the number of accepted refugees in Japan is too many, too many. And 27% um, said, we should not accept more any more refugees, um, and ask why, why, why not? They said we are concerned about the security. So this is the um, typical uh, attitude of the Japanese public. They are ignorant of the refugee problems. They they mix up migrants with refugees, and they are just fearful of uh, seeing uh, refugees. Another one is this, the statistics. And the, Japan was at the bottom of um, a country, um, list of countries uh, in terms of uh, awareness and knowledge about UNCR and the refugees. Out of 17 countries, Japan was the lowest. The low recognition rate is largely due to the um, um, free riding by um, economic migrants on the asylum system. The, in 2010, the MOJ decided to grant perm work permits to all asylum seekers unconditionally. At that time, Japan was totally close to um, foreign workers. So the, some people um, found an um, opportunity. If I go to Japan and ask for asylum, then I have um, freedom to work. In fact, when I was in, in Myanmar uh, five years ago, the tour guy said, my friend went to Japan to work. He just raised hands to apply for asylum. That was the case. And then the number of asylum seekers increased by 50% every year until uh, it, it reached 20,000 in 2017. The, of course, uh, the re recognition rate went down sharply to 0.1 percent. Ministry of Justice or ISA decided to stop this and um, stop the practice of uh, providing um, work permits unconditionally, unconditionally and uniformly to all asylum seekers and number of uh, asylum seekers came down by almost 80 percent. Reform of the U.S. refugee state of determination. I was a member of the expert panel on the reform reform of the RSC refugee state of determination. The the panel issued four recommendations in 2014, listed as follows: the start of the complementary protection, uh, preparation of the refugee status um, um, recognition guidelines. And uh, also the containment of uh, abusive applications. The, the first one, um, introduction of the complementary protection, has been started. Indeed, the, the, uh, the bill to revise the immigration law was introduced last year with some provision to create um, complementary protection. Um, that means um, people who do not meet the five reasons can still be protected uh, um, under the complementary protection. 
But that bill was um, um, rejected by the Diet last year. I think uh, some of you who are familiar with the um, um, refugee issues will know about the background. But at the same time, the IESA Ministry of Justice has already started the implementation of uh, the complementary protection, like um, Myanmar nationals who, uh, who have been given um, permit to stay um, last year. 35,000 Myanmar nationals have been given extension of the visa. And after the Afghanistan um, takeover by Taliban, the government invited or accepted 600 um, Afghans who had been working for the Japan, Japanese government or JICA to come to Japan. And lately, the government almost invited 1,000 Ukrainians to come to Japan and offer them a um, special permit. And eventually, they will be given complementary protection. So the, this complementary protection has been already implemented without um, formal revision of the law. Refugee status and termination guidelines have been almost finished, a pending of sign off. It reflects the so called international standards. Um, once completed, it will be put on the um, web so that everybody can see it, including the other governments. I think this is a very, very important step, um, uh, not only to enhance transparency and accountability, but to share the better refugee status uh, process among the Asian countries. Third one, um, capacity enhancement. This uh, I will skip. Uh, the government is trying to enhance the capacity. And fourth one, uh, containment of abusive applications. This has been the most um, uh, contents passed, and this has been the, the um, uh, issue ISA has been spending uh, a lot of energy. The concern is to stop this sharp increase in the uh, application, asylum applications. They believe that the majority of these people are um, say, um, not genuine refugees, but people who want to come to Japan for work. So they have introduced a number of measures, such as um, um, do not issue a work permit, or do not even allow them to stay in Japan if they are repeat applications with some um, reasons, such as I have a debt, and uh, if I go back to my home country, I'll be killed. So the, the restrictions have been introduced, and uh, it's um, the fact working a number came down a lot. Second um, one, alternate pathways. There has been a lot of changes, improvement, and new ways of accepting refugees without going through the refugee status determination process, particularly the third country resettlement program, which is being expanded, and also accepting uh, refugees as, as um, students, uh, international students on scholarship. And eventually, there will be um, um, attempts to accept the refugees as um, foreign workers, because Japan do, does need um, more foreign workers. So this is a potential. This is a potential. Um, Uniqlo has started uh, on a, mini, a small scale. Financial contributions. This is very important. I must stress that this is the area where Japan has been um, making a lot of contributions, and this is where Japan can do more. And this is where other governments expect Japan to do, not only to provide humanitarian assistance, but in the case of uh, Ukraine, rebuild the country. They need a lot of money, a lot of billions of dollars of money, and Japan can play a major role there. So um, I think we have to shift focus on narrow um, issue of um, refugee state of determination to all-time pathways and also to financial contributions in such a way that Japan as a whole 
provide them international protection to a larger number of refugees and indeed an internally displaced persons. So let's not forget about the fact Japan has been doing. I know this because I was a controller of UNHCR. We want, UNHCR wants to do a lot, but without money, you can't do much. Eventually, it comes to the issue of money. If we have plenty of money, unlimited amount of money, UNHCR can do a lot. But the reality is that they are always short of money. It's always short of money. Support for Ukrainian refugees. Um, the government almost invited them, um, Ukrainians. And the basic reason is um, the diplomatic and uh, strategic considerations. It's more it's politically motivated acceptance. Um, but it's not only that, the strong public support is also playing a role. The government initiative to accept Ukrainians plus aid, aid boom combined is um, helping Ukrainians a lot. And this is unprecedented. Private sector is also collecting a lot of money. It's not, uh, it's not um, um, Public, but as I mentioned, Japan Foreign Share NGO would collect $100 million this year. $100 million from 400,000 Japanese citizens. And other NGOs are collecting also a lot of money. So we can't underestimate the um, power of um, private sector in terms of raising funds for protecting refugees. Um, now, Concluding remarks, um, the Japan's refugee policy is changing a lot, particularly since, say, five years. Um, the reform of the RSD is going on. There are new alternative ways to accept the refugees. And in terms of money, the more and more NGOs are collecting more money to be sent to UNCR or direct to the are receiving countries. So taken as a whole, I think Japan is doing a um, um, decent job, particularly when other say, um, developed countries are closing their doors to refugees. Of course, Japan started that from the bottom going up. Others started that at the top and coming down. But still, it's a good trend which should be encouraged, which should be encouraged particularly because 2022 is the 40th year of uh, Japan's accession to the Refugee Convention. Um, Japan is opening um, in terms of um, foreign workers, and this is also important background. If you accept um, 300,000 or 400,000 foreign workers, why not a few thousand refugees? And this argument uh, works, and Japan is um, um, indeed improving the reception of the refugees. So my first, my last phrase and question, is Japan still a free rider? And Japan, what can Japan do in the next um, years and decades? So this is my end of my um, presentation. 